Hi, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my home DIY videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a half-hot wall outlet. And some people might be asking, what's the big deal? I mean, it's just a wall outlet. You just replace the live and the neutral wire. However, the special thing about this is that it's half-hot, which means that there, these two outlets are independent of each other. This bottom one is always on. This top one is turned on by a switch, such as this one. So we're going to explain how the circuit works later, at least to the best of my ability. But for now, we're going to talk about the wall outlet itself. So right here, we have the new wall outlet and the old wall outlet. So as you can see, uh, just a quick glance of what they look like. When you buy a new wall outlet, you're going to see that it comes with both sides of the either the neutral side or the live side connected. However, uh, because we want these to be independent of each other, these two wires cannot be connected or they're going to short circuit. So what you can do is you can take a screwdriver and we already done that actually, and you can just pry out this tab and you can see that uh, what it looks like before you pry it out right here. So your initial worry when you're doing this might be that what if it's connected internally? What if there's just a bridge just under this plastic? And in order to test that, what you can do is you can use a multimeter to test continuity or uh, ohms, I guess. And what you can do is, you'll notice that with these ones, when they have a bridge next to them, and you connect the terminals, that there is continuity detected. But after you take off the bridge, oh, this light is a bit tricky, you can see that there's not any continuity at all. Uh, for those who don't know, when you're trying to detect continuity on a multimeter, when there's no continuity, it outputs a 1, as you can see right now. But when there is continuity, out of these two, then it puts something out less than one. Now, just for another demonstration, when there's no continuity, it's gonna stay one. All right, so now let's take a look at the wall. So, as, so if you want to know how to take off the uh, outlet, it's the reverse of installing it. So when we install it, it's basically the reverse of that. But anyway, first off, we want to make sure that the that it's not live right now. And the first way you can do that. Uh, is to switch off the breaker. But in, in order to be completely sure, what you can do is use a special tool uh, such as this, and this detects any uh, if there's any current floating around. So you can see that when it's beeping, it's detecting current. And when it's on the neutral wire, it's not detecting current. If you didn't understand, these two wires are uh, hot wires, or they they're live wires. And this white wire right here is a neutral wire. So when it detects these black or red wires, then it should be t detecting power. But if it's plugged to these, then it shouldn't be detecting any current. Now, keep in mind that for some houses, or some very old houses, the white wire doesn't mean neutral. It can actually mean power. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you're concerned about me uh, dealing with electronics, uh, please rest assured that my dad is right here. He's, uh, he studied electrical engineering for a while. So I'm pretty sure he's a good coach. So please rest assured. This is our breaker. Your breaker might be different, but we have everything written down. So the outlet that we're working on right now uh, should be this breaker. So just flip that off and go back up and make sure that it's the right one. Mm -hmm. All right, so after we flip the breaker, now we're gonna use the Klein tool. Uh, by the way, if I didn't mention it earlier, you should definitely get one of these. Uh, the Klein tool, it's a proximity sensor for electricity, as opposed to having to put terminals all up into the circuit so you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted yourself. That would be quite shocking. I'm sorry about that. But uh, right now, <laughs> if we put the Klein tool up to any of the wires, you can see that it's not detecting anything. And it's not beeping. Uh, that one beep doesn't mean anything. It's just lingering. But as you can see, it should be okay. All right, so now we are doing installation, which is the reverse of removal. So basically, you want to make sure that the terminal that you're dealing, I mean, the screws that you're dealing with are not the current connected ones. That would go to the neutral. And you're going to take one of the black or red wires and then just try to make sure that it's shaped in a U-shape so that it can go under this screw. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tighten the screw on top of the wire. So let me demonstrate. We have the black wire. We're going to slide it under this wire. And 
Of course, you want to make sure that this is why the screws are loosened before you do that. And then you can take the screwdriver and tighten it. Now then, if you're dealing with a wire, uh, such as this one, where the uh, opening is too small, then what you can do is you can either open the opening, or you can loosen the screw. Now I think this opening that's on the wire is a bit too small for it to still fit through the screw. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a needle nose plier, and we're just going to open that a tiny bit up. This is really hard to bend, by the way. There we go. So now we tighten that. All right, so we've got the live wires done. You wanna make sure that when you tighten these, that uh, first off, it's tight enough, and also that the wires make contact with the uh, metal, of course. And after we have the live side done, we're gonna turn our attention to the neutral side. So same procedure, just it's gonna be hard to do on camera, but just flip it under, flip it under the screw and tighten it. I can't see it. Oh, we're gonna open it just a bit. And if opening it doesn't work, then we're going to loosen the screw. But I think we have it. Okay. This is the most awkward camera angle. <laughs> all right, so now we have all of our wires in. Uh, I'm not sure if we have to worry about ground or not, but anyway, after we have all the wires in, what we're gonna do is we're just going to push the outlet back into the wall. Uh, these wires are a bit hard to bend, so you might have to push them or bend them a bit in order to get this fit to fit, but then you should be able to fit it in. All right, so we have the outlet on the wall. We have both the screws in. And now what we're going to do is, before we put the faceplate on, what we're going to do is going to turn, flip the breaker on, and then we're going to try testing it, both the bottom and the top, and the top one with the switch uh, on and off. And that, uh, we, Also, we have to have something that plugs in, of course. All right, so we're back in the room. You can see the lights are on right now. So let's test it with this uh, very dusty lamp. So on the top one, I'm pretty sure the top one is going to be on regardless, and the bottom one's going to be on regardless. I mean, the bottom one's going to be the switch one. So if we press the switch right now. Okay, so this looks like the bottom one is the one that's only ha hot half the time. But if we put on the top one, you can see that regardless of how we switch it, it stays on. So it looks like we did it. All right. All right, so all I have to do now is put the faceplate back on. Hold on, let me move this over. Oh, all I have to do now is put the faceplate back on, and after that, we're gonna go outside, and then we're gonna do a bit of an explanation on just how the circuit works. I don't really think this one matters. And then where's the screw? <laughs> the screw is right here. These are way different than a bolt like on a car because it's really hard to screw in my hand. Ah, or maybe it's the same in that regard. And there we go. Alright, so we're back in the dining room. Uh, please mind the mess. And, except for Bella's collar. And right now I'm going to try to explain, to the best of my knowledge, I, I might not be truly correct, but to the best of my knowledge, how the circuit works. And if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments because you know, I am a kid. And even though my dad is an electrical engineer, we still might be wrong on some aspects. So right here, we have a diagram that my dad was using to try to explain to me how the circuit worked, but I'm gonna try to translate that because this diagram might look confusing to you guys. So here I have my handy dandy whiteboard. And what we're gonna do is we have the, the wall outlet say it looks like this and the way it works is that you have on each side there are screws so there's a screw here a screw here 
screw here and screw here. On the right side, or your right, there's going to be the neutral wires, and on the left side, there's going to be the live wires. The live wires go back to the breaker, and the neutral wires also go back to the breaker in order to form a sort of circuit, because in order for there to be a circuit, it has to be a circle. So what happens is that uh, it basically goes from one live wire on one side of the outlet, and then it goes through whatever the appliance is, and then it goes back through to the neutral wire, back to the breaker. And the way that it's half hot, which means that uh, the way that only they're independent, is that one of the live wires is completely uh, unrestrained from the breaker to the outlet, but the other one goes through the switch. And then it goes to the live wire. So this switch here, um, I've mentioned it in my other videos, but it also goes to like the lights in the room. So this switch right here is what makes this independent from this. And then, so you can see right here, there's a break. So these two are not connected. However, as you saw when we were uh, outlining the uh, outlet, the neutral are connected. So that means there's only one wire, the one neutral wire going to the breaker, but there are two live wires going to the outlets. Hopefully that cleared up what the circuitry is for the duplex half hot uh, outlet. Um, if I'm wrong, like I said before, please correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that this is right. Alright, so I hope that uh, diagram was clear. Um, I apologize if you can see a flash in the video right now, but uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to replace the switch. This is just a simple single pole switch, uh, you know, as opposed to a multiple pole switch. But anyway, our next video is going to be about how to replace this switch, and we're also going to be doing a video in the future about um, installing this LED light without a ballast. Uh, but that's in the far future. So, for now, I'm Iman, and thanks for watching. Please like or comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on I and Iman, uh, especially the electronic videos. You know, it's a great learning experience for me, uh, especially from experienced electricians who tend to watch my videos and correct me on any mistakes I make. So, uh, I'll see you there, and I guess that's it. So, oh, and there's also, you might have noticed that there's security cameras in the back so I, I did a few videos on these too so if you want to go check them out then I'll see you there but for now I'm Iman and signing out peace